Thank you, TJ, for that amazing uh, intro. Shout out to uh, our online wave fam, Africa. What's up, Africa? You know, I think I'll say it probably every time. Steph, you're going to stay here with me for a second. How good is worship in church? You know, I mean, good night. I could have stood down there and sang for another hour or four. So, amen. Our God, man, he is amazing. He's a way maker. Pastor Johnny, come up there and good night. Even when you don't see it, he's working. I need you to believe that. Say, I believe that today. <sighs> Has this series been fun, called up? Yeah, it's been a blast. Um, it's, been, it's been fun. TJ, he's real comical. But I got one that's going to beat him today. He's got all these team names. But, uh... Steph, you ready? I don't know, Coach. I don't know if I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least she's honest. <laughs> but uh, I'm calling up the MVP today. He's got the perfect record, the perfect stats, the perfect everything. I don't even think he's ever got his uh, uniform dirty. We're calling him up. He's from Nazareth. He played for the Nazarene Angels. Nazarene Angels, who's it going to be? Jesus Christ. Ah, yeah, that's good. That's good. I appreciate that laugh. I appreciate that. How many married people out there? Raise your hand. I can barely see. How many single people out there? Kids? Hey, no, no. single adults. No kids. <laughs> kids, you're all single until you're... At least 20. Any, okay. Single adults, keep your hands up. Take a look around. There you go. I wanted to say that. I, I really did. First service, there wasn't a lot. I said, how many singles? And I only saw one, so take a look around. Really wouldn't do anything. So, who needs some restoration today? Who needs uh, to know that Jesus loves them? Uh, that Jesus is a way maker? That Jesus is the, uh, he will restore you. Who needs that? I need it. Let's do it. Let's jump in. I'm married. I've been married 12 and a half years. Hey, Tyler, I see you in the back. You look good. You look like you've been getting a lot of sun. Uh, sorry, sidetracked. It's that lake, isn't it? Lake. Anyway, sorry, let me get back. I've been married 12 and a half years. Uh, the greatest 12 and a half years of my life. Amen. Uh, first year was, I heard her dad laughing, he's here. Um, first year was tough. You know, they say marriage is tough, but I'm telling you, marriage is tough. First year was tough. We got through first year, and I thought, man, this is easy breezy, smooth sailing. I was wrong. Marriage is tough. You got to work at it constantly. But it's, the gr it's great. It's, I love her to death. She's my number one fan. But about five years in... I got to a point where I needed some restoration. I didn't know I needed restoration. But uh, I was working out all the time. I know it doesn't look like that. But that was years ago, so don't judge me. It didn't happen overnight. But uh, anyway, got to about year five, and I woke up, and we were on the verge of divorce. And uh, I don't mean like, well, I'm going to divorce you. I mean like... I'm done. Pack your stuff. Get out. And uh, God started working on my heart, and I went down and saw, him, saw some friends of mine, and, you know, you, you get worldly advice, but, you know, when you really get that, that biblical advice, and it's, sometimes it's tough to hear, but it's, it's what we needed. And uh, we met Johnny and Heather, and, and they started pouring into us, but Jesus restored that marriage. And Jesus, that's my first thought, Jesus was called to restore. But if I think about Jesus not restoring that marriage, I wouldn't be where I am right here this very second. I don't know where I'd be. I wouldn't be, sure wouldn't have started a church. Probably would have went down to who knows what. But I wouldn't be here. Jesus is called to restore. So remember that as we go, he's called to restore. Restoration is a recurring theme 
in Scripture. As those who strayed from the teaching of God sought to restore their relationship with him. He wants to restore you. He wanted to restore my marriage. You know, the Bible says what, what, you know, and I don't know this one exact, but what God brings together, don't let any man break apart. You know, I'm saved. I'm baptized. I go to church every now and then at that time. We went to church. I went to church whenever I couldn't get a tea time. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't serve on any team. I didn't, we didn't tithe. We didn't do anything. We just kind of checked that box. And so I wake up and don't know at the time I need restoration, but here I am in the marriage. Jesus restores that. And my faith is restored. I had seen, you know, we, we read these stories in the Bible of amazing miracles and 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 to me uh that's what i was living right then i saw god do something oh, something allergies or something i saw god do something in our life that was nothing short of a miracle okay he wants to restore why is my marriage failing i mean why many questions why doesn't she do the dishes more that's still a question does anybody's wife she says i hate vacuuming i hate it but will you buy me an expensive vacuum so i can hate it amen i saw i heard an amen Anyway, sorry. But how did I overcome the world, right? My faith. John, 1 John 5, 4, you see every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. Your faith, my faith. Listen. My, just because I'm standing up here speaking to you, that's because God is, you know, I mean, I wouldn't even pray in front of people and now I'm speaking, but I have no more access to anything in the Bible than you. I have no more access to faith. I have no more access to miracles. I have no, it's your faith. So, you know, we're, you know, trying to restore this marriage Matthew 6, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. That's red letter. That's straight from the MVP, Jesus. Seek him above all else, everything else. Seek him and he will what? Give you everything you need. At the time, I didn't think I needed a wife. And allergies are getting to me again. But if, if, if Jesus wouldn't have restored that, I wouldn't have Owen. So, come on. Jesus wants to restore something for you today. Just like Waymaker says, even if I don't see it, you're working. How many of you, you can raise your hand, you can nod, you can nod, whatever. How many of you are going through something right now? that you don't see, you don't see anything good coming out of you. You don't see, you're just kind of, yeah. He's working. Those songs we sing, we don't sing them just, and I said this last time, just because they sound good and they got a good hook. They're biblical. Jesus is where I found restoration. That's where you're going to find it too. My next thought, Jesus calls us to endure. Endure. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. 
Verse 4, but Jesus told them, no, the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Every word. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order the angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Verse 8, next the devil took, devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I don't, I'm going to stop right there. I don't know about you. I, I, the devil's never taken me like that, but the devil sure has tried to get me off my path. What was Jesus' path in that moment? He, you know, he was led there by the Spirit. The devil was trying to get him off that path. Come on, let me distract you. Let me, let me try to steal something from you. Let me try to get you somewhere that God is not wanting you to go. Or I'm, yeah, I messed that up. Verse 8, next the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and only serve him. Jesus, when he came, he came to the earth, he, 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 he had a human nature. You know, he experienced, uh, you know, uh, uh, the temptations or, or experienced what we can experience don't you think for one second that Satan is not going to try to tempt you, try to get you off track? He did it to Jesus. He's going to do it to you. But he calls us to endure. James 4, 7, so then surrender to God. Stand up to the devil and resist him. And he will turn and run away from you. Satan flees. Owen hasn't, you know, he doesn't beg me for things yet, but Pastor Johnny's talked about that. So he's like, he's going to come, come, come. No, go away. Sorry, sidetrack. But uh, uh, a QB illustration Pastor Johnny uses, there's a quarterback, and he's got his O-line, and they're protecting him. They're the defenders of the QB. And let's just say for sake of the argument, the de defense is the, is the, I don't know, uh, devils, okay? And they are coming. As that quarterback is being defended by the O-line, he is resisting the devil. And they are coming in all directions, all directions. He's resisting. He's not going he, 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 he's not gonna last forever, and he will flee. How many, needs, how many of y'all need the devil to flee in a situation? Every day. Every day, resist him, he will flee. How comforting is that? How comforting, you know, it doesn't say, I love that. I like to think about that as in Scripture. It doesn't say he might flee or he might think about fleeing or, or he'll flip a coin and if it lands on heads, he's going to flee. No, it says he will, W-I-L-L, -L, will flee. Yeah, Jesus is our defender. Jesus is our O-line right here. If we are resisting, we have the greatest defender, the MVP of all time, defending us. Resist him and he will flee. Next thought, Jesus was called the love. John 10, 14 through 18, I am the good shepherd. I love this. This is so good. I know my own sheep, and they know me. Just as my Father knows me, and I know the Father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, too. They are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, and, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. Verse 17, the Father loves me because I sacrificed my life, so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have the authority to lay it down.
what I want to and also to take it up again. For this is what my Father has commanded. If, you, if you're going to take one thing away from today, Jesus absolutely loves you so, so much. So much he calls you friend. So much that he lays his life down. So much. While I'm yelling at my wife, which I don't do a lot, JK, I'm a, I'm a yeller sometimes. But anyway, when I'm yelling at my wife, when I am doing things I shouldn't be doing, you know, all my BC life, my before Christ life, all that, he still then called me a friend, died for me because he loves me. It's nothing I can do. Um, you know, I love, I love the little saying, good thing my salvation is based on performance. It's based on his love because my performance is terrible, mediocre, terrible. That's just who we are, human nature. But it's his love that saves us. Every sinner has a future and every saint has a past. Reminds me of no perfect people allowed. There's nothing you've done or can do that is going to outreach the love of God. Period. You can try. You can think you did. You know. But our God's way bigger than that. Because you, that's us saying we're bigger than, than the love of God. And that's not true. John 3.16, as some of you may have heard it, uh, Tim Tebow made it famous. <laughs> JK. JK. Tim, if you're watching, I didn't mean anything but. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish and have eternal life. That is all phenomenal, rich, good, good. Just amazing stuff. I've read John 3.17, but not, not a lot. And then as I'm studying for this, I come, God gives me this verse, and, and, and listen how good this is. Because that one's amazing. God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world. But to save it and rescue it. Mm. God, whatever you're doing, God is not here to judge and condemn. He's here to love and save and rescue. Now, that don't mean keep doing what we do. I mean, you got to put effort in, but he is not here to judge and condemn. He's here to save and rescue. Last thought. Jesus was called to give eternal life. You know, when he spoke, spoke this into motion, he wanted a relationship with us. He wanted, he wanted, you, he wanted it. First John 5, 11, 12. This is the true testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life has its source in his son. Whoever has the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not have the Son does not possess eternal life. Any questions with that one? I love it because it's simple. You know, so many times we complicate, you know, friends growing up, they're like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this before I can be saved. Uh-uh. It's right here. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it complicated. It's not about performance. It's about his love. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Free gift. How many gift givers we got out there? Free gift. It's a free gift. There's nothing you can do. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. But it's a gift. I don't deserve it. 
Jesus' love endured the cross, and through his death and resurrection, he restored us to have a relationship with him. Jesus wants to restore you.